Good morning and welcome to Almas Market Morning. Is your daily dose of global financial updates with me, Swaraj. One of the common narratives we have discussed on this podcast has been which central bank can out of the Fed. Uh, the ECB hiked rates by twenty five basis, but there was a visible concern about the growth. Adding fuel to the fire, uh, adding fuel to the euro bears fire was the strong numbers out of US. Uh, whether it was the GDP data, the durable goods data, or the drop, uh, dropping jobless claims. Uh, morning, JK. Uh, JK, to me, it seems we are in a situation where US is faring better uh, with dropping inflation, lower unemployment concerns, and uh, the moderate growth Powell was talking about. How do you see uh, yesterday? How do you see all of this in yesterday's ECB meeting context and the data that was released? Good morning, Suraj. It was a double whammy for the dollar yesterday. As, uh, as we had a dovish uh, ECB and a hawkish US data that saw the dollar index soar more than 1.25%. And most currencies and even the seemingly invincible range of USD INR has come under upward pressure. And we have been saying that uh, more than rate hikes, which were fully discounted by the market, power guidance mattered. And while Fed was neutral, ECB turned out to be more dovish. Obviously, the economic picture has pressured them into uh, that. Uh, we have been saying, in fact, that the Eurozone economy has been performing poorly. And it was an official announcement yesterday by the policymaker when President Lagarde said economic inflation outlook is highly uncertain. And we are open minded. At the end of the day, if you want to take a call on who is more likely to hike in the coming months, it will be Fed and not the ECB. That is the big picture change that we are seeing, and that's reflected in the euro exchange rate as well. And even the exchange rate itself has been a headwind for the policymakers because uh, the export dependent uh, large economies in the eurozone have been, you know, slowing down. Germany has been in a, uh, a recession now. Uh, the a bank will obviously follow a data dependent approach to its policy decision in going forward, uh, you know, and uh, with financing conditions increasingly dampening the demand as we have uh, shown in the loan uh, numbers in the recent uh, days. Uh, uh, I think uh, the case for another hike by the ECB is at least pushed forward, if not, you know, uh, you know, if not totally uh, nullified. Now, uh, every data published by us came stronger than expected gdp 2.4 versus 1.8 percent expected jobless claims 2 lakh 21 thousand versus 2 lakh 35 thousand expected durable goods orders coming almost thrice the expectations and trade deficit loans estimates improving to four percent and pending home sales were also higher than expected now the data just added to the dovish ecb seeing the euro slump uh, more than uh, 1.5 uh, percent, and uh, the big picture, uh, the big impact was of course seen on the U.S. yields. The two-year yields have risen by 12 basis points, 10-year by 19 basis points, and even the 30-year by 17 basis points. The yield curve between two and 10-year has flattened to 91 basis points once again, indicating reduced expectations of a near-term recession. And let's recall that Powell himself said that staff projections indicate that there will be no recession in the U.S. this year. There was a seven-year bond auction by the U.S. Treasury, which yielded 4.087% versus 3.839% previously. And it was a, quite an unreceptive sale. And this is the highest seven-year yield sale since its inception in uh, 2009. Uh, German yields, on the other hand, had slumped nine basis points on the 10 year, uh, you know, but closed with a loss of uh, just two basis points, thanks to the big rise in US uh, yields, which rubbed off on other markets. And also the reports about BOJ about to tweak on their uh, policy uh, of uh, yield curve control. Uh, the Treasury, uh, of course, had got a big boost after this uh, report from Nikkei, uh, which said that uh, Japan will discuss tweaking its yield control policy at the policy um, meeting uh, today. And uh, the yield on the 10-year JGBs have already crossed 0.5%. <laughs> Uh, before the meeting itself. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, the impact on the stock market was a bit delayed uh, after the Nikkei report uh, indicated. And uh, we had uh, the Dow falling uh, by more than 200 points. I mean, it was par for the course because we had a 13-day rally in the Dow. And other markets were you know, uh, also on the defensive side, mostly on the profit taking. Uh, nobody wants to assume that we will eventually do that. Uh, we still await it should be out any moment the decision uh, but uh, the uh, you know start the 
investors were in a mood to uh, take profit. On the dollar, uh, it was not just the euro. Eventually, all the uh, currencies uh, capitulated uh, more due to U.S. yields going up and then intensified after the uh, Japanese news because Japan uh, yen, uh, which has been used uh, widely on carry trades uh, and some unwinding has been seen, uh, Japanese crosses against the euro, GBP, RC, and Canadian dollar, and even on the INR have been unwound to some extent and that's uh, shown in the strength in the yen and the weakness in these uh, currencies. Uh, going forward, I think the dollar index will definitely be well supported. It has crossed above the previous double bottom at 100.80 and now well above 101. Uh, and, uh, so uh, I think uh, we, we probably move uh, up uh, in, irrespective of what Japan does. I think dollar rupee, uh, sorry, the dollar index will be well supported uh, because of the, its superior growth picture and also the yields uh, rising. And in a month or rather in the coming months where a lot of issuances are lined up and the appetite for paper is less, uh, I think we will have uh, the yields go even further and support the uh, dollar overall. Uh, in the, in, you know, uh, in a week full of data, Friday provides no relief to market watchers because uh, we have major releases, uh, employment cost index, which uh, the uh, Power, uh, Chairman Powell was uh, hinting at to look, and then the PCE core inflation. And in fact, the GDP number showed uh, that the uh, PCE in deflators with the core rate was down to an annualized 3.8%. That is the lowest increase in over two years. And then we will, of course, have the German inflation also uh, and uh, French uh, uh, GDP. So these are uh, something uh, which we'll have to digest before we come at the conclusion. Of course, the nearest uh, uh, event to note would be the Japanese uh, uh, policy rate uh, decision, which is uh, due, uh, which is in fact overdue already and not it, uh, seen any announcement. On the rupee, uh, you know, more flows were being talked about yesterday, hence the rupee was unable to stay above 82. Uh, but uh, the overnight events in the uh, global markets, US uh, uh, yield soaring, and then ECB rate decision, BOJ uh, tweaks, all these have led to USD and are breaking the resistance initially at 8205, and then again at 8220, traded a high of 8237. Uh, I think um, uh, in the environment of overall dollar strength, the flows might well get absorbed by the market and we may be in a new range between 80 to 10 and 80 to 40 for the time being. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, yesterday's theme can be well summarized as a double whammy for the dollar, uh, a dovish ECB and a hawkish US data. Uh, ECB, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the chairperson of uh, the ECB, Lagarde, remains open-minded. Uh, but it seems that uh, if you want to bet on who is more likely to hike, it would be Fed rather than ECB as of now. Uh, US GDP, it came at 2.4% versus 1.8% expected. And the durable goods data came in almost thrice the estimate. Uh, all of this led to some sort of dollar strength. And at the same time, we saw a rise in US yields. Uh, now the US 2 to 10 year yield, in, yield curve inversion has flattened to 91 basis. Uh, we are awaiting the BOJ meeting outcome, but uh, the rumor has it that Japan will discuss tweaking of the yield curve control in today's meeting. Uh, major releases uh, for today will be US Employment Cost Index, which Powell uh, monitors, uh, PCE core inflation, and of course the big uh, Japanese policy update. Uh, overnight events has led to INR breaking the resistance of 82.05, and uh, we are traded somewhat higher than that. It was quite an eventful week uh, and we will discuss more uh, on Monday uh, the latest updates from the financial markets and see if the current dollar strength story changes or not. Thank you for listening and tune in on Monday for another round of fresh updates. Thank you so much.